Hey, Rail fans, I'm Deanne with RailFanDepot.com. Today, we're going to the Kentucky Virginia border to see operations at what is called the only mainline switchback in the country, and it includes a tunnel. Find a spare couple of minutes and grab a beverage. It's Sunday morning coffee and trains with Deanne. If you've already subscribed, welcome back, Rail fan. If you've not subscribed, we'd love to have you on board. This is the former LNN Cumberland Valley Division. Now the CSX CV sub. What you'll see is a lot of coal. To get it over the mountain to Virginia, they use Hagen Tunnel and then Hagen Switchback, a Y to head trains the correct direction. I've already got my LNN coffee mug. Let's go. A set of helper engines comes down the lower leg of Hagen Switchback. The brakeman aligns the lower switchback at Smiley and the helpers take off down the main toward the tunnel and Loyal Yard. Trains heading south, out the back door at Loyal, must pass through Hagen's Tunnel and over the famous switchback. The tunnel was the longest on the LNN and is 6,244 feet long. Exiting the tunnel, trains pull up into the south tail track of the switchback at Smiley. The remainder of the cars that won't fit are shoved onto a holding track by rear-end helper engines until the entire consist clears the switchback turnout. The helpers then back up the lower switchback lead to clear the holding track. Switch thrown, the helpers ease forward to recouple up to the train. The entire train then backs up the lower leg of the switchback and into the middle tail track to clear the upper switchback turnout. It's then off to points east as the entire train pulls uphill to the old CV main above Hagen's Tunnel and on to Big Stone Gap, Virginia. There, CSX has trackage rights over the Norfolk Southern to reach its former Clinchfield tracks to the Carolinas. The old CV no longer goes through west of here, but is used as a stub-end siding for meets at the switchback. A loaded train exits Hagen's Tunnel. This footage is from Eastern Kentucky Coal by Pentrex. More great footage is on the DVD. There's a link in the description. Hey, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. Switchback operations date back to 1930 when the first train passed through Hagen's Tunnel. The connection was considered a temporary arrangement until financing could be generated to build the line through to a Clinchfield connection. 
Temporary became permanent over the years with no problems until the unexpected coal boom of the 1970s. The switchback continues to be a bottleneck, but improvements over the years have made it as efficient as possible. The train comes to a stop as the lead engines have reached the end of the tail track. After the remaining cars have been uncoupled, the helper engines shove them up into a holding track. In the meantime, an empty train has arrived up top and pulls down the old CV main to wait for its turn to traverse the switchback. As an interesting note, this is a meet between the same two trains. Both are South Carolina Public Service Authority trains. stay on until the train reaches Watkins, 30 miles south of Big Stone Gap, Virginia, on the Norfolk Southern.
The empty train wastes no time in getting underway. Backs out of the siding. Switch thrown, the train pulls forward and heads down grade to the middle tail track. Down at Smiley, we catch the cars backing round the lower switchback lead and into the tail track. If you're watching on YouTube, we invite you to our Facebook page where we have a video clip every day. If you're watching on Facebook, join us over on YouTube. We call this Sunday morning coffee and trains, but I guess anytime you can grab a few minutes and relax is a good time for coffee and trains. If you enjoy this, how about a like or love and leave a comment below. Now let's see some more CSX in Kentucky. The remaining cars and the power now back up onto a holding track to clear the lower switchback turnout.
Having pulled ahead, the power shoves back onto the remainder of its train. Back together now, the train moves out. Empty hoppers return once again to eastern Kentucky and will be refilled with more Appalachian black gold. There's enough coal in these mountains to last hundreds of years. It's good to know that while some railroad operations have vanished, the coal fields of eastern Kentucky will provide exciting and scenic railroading for many, many years to come.